Are you tired of overpaying for your gold, silver, and platinum bullion coins and bars? Then visit sdbullion.com today. SD Bullion was recently named the 177th fastest growing company in the United States by Inc. Magazine. This is because they offer the absolute lowest prices in the industry and follow up with over the top customer service. So what are you waiting for? Go to sdbullion.com today. Enjoy more than 60,000 happy investors that save money on every precious metals purchase they make. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's December 6th, 2017. Well, Bitcoin is all the rage these days. It seems to be all anyone is talking about. Recently at uh, a mining conference, no, not Bitcoin mining, gold mining, silver mining, and you would have thought you were at a Bitcoin conference. That's all anyone was talking about. Hey, as always, join the show, get involved, email us kl at kerrylutz.com, and hey, don't forget our Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz. So Adam Mesh is back with us now. Adam's been trading a long time. And Adam, uh, welcome back to the show here. Thanks, Kerry. Always a pleasure to be here. And uh, thanks for having me. Always. So, hey, we're looking at Bitcoin. So mining Bitcoin is a lot like mining uh, precious metals. You need tremendous amounts of energy. Although with, uh, with precious metals, you use that energy to dig out the rock and then to pound it, turn it into dust, and then take your metal out. With Bitcoin, you use it to run your server farm 24-7 and hopefully eke out a couple of Bitcoins or cryptocurrencies uh, in the process. So there's kind of a lot uh, similar to them, although you don't really have people digging in the ground looking for Bitcoins. It's funny, I, my wife's cousin, who's 12, who's really, really smart, is, is currently mining for Bitcoins. And he said it's a win-win because he doesn't pay the energy bill. <laughs> <laughs> How do his parents feel about that one? <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, I, I, I thought bigger. I was like, how do I hire you? <laughs> yeah, well. Hey, I like the way you think, kid. You know, in uh, out west, they had these grow houses where they're growing uh, marijuana, which is legal and becoming more legal by the day. But a lot of uh, these grow houses closed up and became Bitcoin mining farms because uh, the cheapest energy in the United States is in Washington state, believe it or not. And, you know, you can get uh, dozens of of rack mounted computers you know, pounding the algorithm, you know, nonstop. And when it's at 12,000, it could actually be profitable. I'm sure it's brought in a lot of people who wouldn't otherwise be thinking of mining because they see that, hey, one, if, if I pull out one Bitcoin a day, that's uh, $12,000 or more. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of an interesting phenomena taking place, isn't it? Well, yeah, let's expand that out and have some fun with this. Ready? So if you're a Bitcoin miner, right, mm -hmm. and the CBOE on December 10th is uh, launching futures trading on Bitcoin and the CME is following suit December 18th and they said there should be futures on the NASDAQ by 2018, imagine you can now sell futures knowing that when you mine your Bitcoin, they're already sold at a price. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty and, amazing. And so it becomes a, a real-life business with locked-in gains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, is it a bubble, though? I mean, really, Adam, that's what you got to be thinking here. Is it a bubble? Because, you know, when you're in a bubble, you know, often don't realize that it's a bubble. I said today that this will either be the greatest short of all time we're the greatest short squeeze of all time. <laughs> and when you look at a, a Bitcoin exchange and you watch it trading, no one is trading 
full Bitcoin. Someone's buying no. and selling a Bitcoin. They're buying one one hundredth of a Bitcoin and changing it, which allows a lot of young people who don't have a lot of money to each just take their shot at it. So rather than a bubble, I would actually use the word Ponzi. You know, you have something that doesn't have value that you keep buying and someone else is buying and someone else is buying and someone else is buying. The value goes up until someone buys it and no one else wants to buy it anymore. Um, the greater fool so, theory at work, right? Yeah. So it's just, uh, but, you know, they always say that the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. And it's certainly uh, something to consider with this. Yeah, well, it, it's interesting because when you when you look at it, uh, it, it isn't a currency now. It's become a victim of its own success because nobody will will spend these things because they're going up uh, 50% a month. And this month, they'll probably be up 100% at the rate it's going. And But, you know, there's always a reason why they tell you that this time it's not a bubble. Just like the real estate market in 2005, six, you know, it has to keep going up. It can't go down, right? And they had a very uh, persuasive argument, Adam, telling you why it's never going to go down. And we all know what happened. Every time the bubble occurs, whatever the bubble is, there's always a reason why it can never burst. And to date, they've always been wrong. So is Bitcoin going to be different? It's funny, I'm still processing what you just said, which is a fantastic point, is that how can it be a currency if it's going up so fast that nobody will actually use it to buy anything with? Um, that's, that's, that's really, I hadn't even thought about that part of it, and it's a phenomenal point um, because it's not a currency, I guess. Yeah, it's it's really just a. It's an asset. It's a bet. It's a bet. <laughs> yeah, it's a bet. it's a betting mechanism. It's a betting currency. Yeah. Well, I told you I was going to create tulip coins, but I think somebody hmm? beat me to it, and they were going to be backed by uh, tulip bulbs in a vault in Holland. But uh, great sixteen hundreds reference there, tulip yeah. mania. Yeah. I mean, there's a movie coming out about that. If it's not out already, that uh, references oh, yeah? that time period and people selling their houses uh, so they could buy and invest in tulips, yeah. which, you know, there's definitely people selling their homes now so they could buy Bitcoin. Oh, for yeah. Sure. I guarantee that's happened. And you know that the, uh, the it's always the person that gets in early and gets out before the rush. I mean, is it going to be one day people are just going to wake up and say, oh, I got to sell my Bitcoin? You know, I know somebody who's Adam's worth $230 million in Bitcoin. $230 million. I mean, that's a lot yeah, of money. I would have never been able to hold it that long. Me I can't either. think I would have made that because I would have never held it. No, long. well, this guy bought it. He didn't need the money. He's a, a person of means. And, uh, and then I heard another one my friend was telling me about. This guy had been a tutor, a math tutor. He had a real troubled past. And he was making 100 grand a year tutoring kids in higher math, obviously, not uh, teaching them the, the uh, multiplication table. And yeah, you're not making six figures no, a year no. of addition and subtraction. No, you're teaching like trig and uh, algebra, advanced algebra and calc. You know, you're, you're serious. And he had 200,000 and he read the article in Wired Magazine in 2010. Bitcoin was at $9.00. It went down. He bought it at two. He bought $100,000 worth of Bitcoin. And now he only spends it if he's going to buy an airplane or a yacht. Otherwise, he never spends the money. <laughs> so you hear these stories, and this is the thing that bubbles are made out of, Adam, you know? And he didn't have stories. to pay taxes on that money either. Not yet. And if he moves to... Uh, uh, I don't know. If he moves to uh, the Channel Islands, he never will. Right. <laughs> you know, it could become like online poker, though. Uh, that, remember that poker craze where yeah. everyone was playing tournaments all day, every day, poker stars, all those. Right. And then all of a sudden, one day the government said, nah, this isn't going to fly. And anyone who's been doing this, you're on the wrong side of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. As soon as they come out with a way, it's not going to be like you're grandfathered into Bitcoin. Uh -huh. you know, as soon as the government could get their hands on this money and go after it and start regulating it. I mean, if that's possible, I don't know. But yeah, you know, they're, they're, I, I wouldn't be able to hold all that knowing that um, – it could be seized. Oh, and, you know, look, an hour, uh, 
earlier in the day, Bitcoin was at 12, broke, just broke 12,000. Now it's at 12,898, so it's about to break 13,000. And you don't think the government is taking notice of this? And if they make it illegal and possession of a Bitcoin is c construed to be possession with intent to distribute Bitcoin, which is much worse, uh, how many people are going to have the guts to thumb their nose up at the government and stay in it? Uh, well, can we talk? Can we talk conspiracy theory for a second? Sure, we are always okay. open to that. Uh, conspiracy. What I if prefer the government? You call it. What if the government's yeah. been the one driving the bitcoins up so that they can control the market because they see it as a threat to their own currency? Right, and then, and then, they then crash it. Right. Oh, Inevitably, waiting for that massive sell-off. Yep, and then they Just can to shake everyone out. They can. Look, because if, if these fiat dollars that the Federal Reserve has an unlimited supply of, then they can buy up all of the existing Bitcoin float so that there's a shortage of it and that it's very hard to, for anyone else to buy. And then all of a sudden, if somebody tried to sell 100,000 coins at once, just like what they the do with gold, collapses. right? Right, Adam? Yeah. Just what they do with gold. It's exactly the same thing. Um, you get this anonymous seller who's right at the weakest moment of the market sells two billion dollars worth of gold and who's that seller adam you're a trader do you do you wait till the market's extra weak and then flood it so you can lose money is that is that the way you work that's not a winning strategy <laughs> not at all so yeah, uh, I would call it a conspiracy hypothesis. It doesn't rise to the level of a theory. A theory is like relativity, where it appears to be true until it's proven otherwise. This is appears to be false until it's proven true. So, but in any event, uh, not to get over picky with it, uh, it's certainly there's not like huge liquidity in it either, you know. Um, Somebody told me they were trying to sell four bitcoins. This is when it was at three thousand one day, and they had a real difficult time getting rid of four bitcoins at once. They had to like split them up and sell them. So now you're so you're trying to sell four bitcoins. That's fifty two thousand dollars, and who's buying it, right? So. Well, but, if I if I was controlling the government and I viewed this as a threat to national security, then the defensive measure I would take would be to, to like you said, just control it because there's a finite amount. They said over the next 100 years, the max number of Bitcoins you could get to is 21 million million right now. And four million have so already been lost. Four million have been lost by people losing their wallets or uh, confiscation or they lost their hard drive. The guy had a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin and the hard drive got thrown out and he was scouring the garbage dump with uh, with metal detectors. <laughs> you know, it's madness here. This is the stuff that bubbles are made out of. But that's not to say that, and I don't want any of you to think that I'm saying there's no role for cryptocurrencies and especially the blockchain in, uh, in our world today. We definitely, definitely have a need for it. And it's got so many applications. And that might really be where, where it all winds up here, Adam. The technology is a lot more interesting and uh, revolutionary, groundbreaking than Bitcoin. The technology is what has a much greater staying power, and I've heard people refer to it as the new internet mm -hmm. or the eventual new internet. And that technology, that unbreakable blockchain code, which is useful for other things, that's that's what you you know excites yeah. people, and you you see yeah. a big trend towards the smartest people in the room looking at that. Absolutely. Well, I gave one example of aircraft parts. Uh, it's really difficult to sort out the counterfeit ones from the real ones, and they've tried numerous systems, and still some of the fake ones get in, usually from China, of course, but all over the world they're counterfeiting. You can't just pick on China. But with a blockchain, you're able to, through the blockchain, which is just a ledger, a series of ledger entries, track the entire history of every aircraft part that's being sold on the market today. 
you know, if I was an aerospace company, I'd be looking at that. And if I was the government. Well, that's how it works. Yeah. You know, the blockchain code is a ledger. Yeah. It's, it replaces a traditional ledger for records. And when you're mining for blockchains, what you're doing is confirming transactions. So yeah. that's, that is Bitcoin. You know, that, that's yeah. blockchain. Every transaction is being confirmed. And that when you're mining, you're getting rewarded for confirming these transactions. You know, totally. same way if you bought a house, you get title insurance and you mm -hmm. have people confirming it. And this is just confirmed more by more people at once. Exactly. So, you know, so a great example would be in the future, instead of having to pay Uber, right, you mm -hmm. can just verify someone and all their transactions online and all the rides they've done and pay them directly. So they get more money, you pay less money, and yeah. everybody wins. Exactly. So what are you seeing with the, what's your thoughts on the futures and uh, I guess eventually you'll have Bitcoin options as well. Is that going to keep it going? Is that going to make it blow off into a major uh, bubble faster or will it stabilize it? So let's look at the futures market as it's traditionally used. If you're if you're a corn grower and you see the price of corn is trading at a good price and you know how much corn you're going to produce and you want to lock in the value of that corn, you're going to sell the corn futures at that price to secure your profit by what you're going to supply. Mm -hmm. And if you are a manufacturer who's buying that corn, you want the price as low as possible. So you're going to lock in the best possible low price. And you have a great natural, traditional balance between the manufacturers and the farmers. With Bitcoin as a currency, the people that want to lock in the price are the miners. If you're mining for Bitcoin, you're going to sell futures to lock in that price to know what your profit is. But there's nobody who has the need to buy it, yeah. like the manufacturers. So you lose that natural hedge, hence... Bitcoin currencies, futures, are going to have a natural bearish position. Right. There's more reasons for people to sell it than there are to buy it. Right. And if you really want it, just go buy it in the spot market, the open market, right? So there's cash buyers, but are there futures buyers for Bitcoin? Um, I guess if you're speculating, you could do spreads, right? You could do Bitcoin spreads and you know, lock in a profit there. But but who's going to write these things? That's what I want to know. It seems like it's... Oh, they'll be written. Yeah. They'll be written. There's, there's money moving around. This is yeah. opportunity. This is... People will be involved. Smart people. It's just like, uh, just like FanDuel, though. You know? Yeah. Like, as soon as they had those fantasy football, where you could play the daily fantasy football, right. the robots came in and they took over the market and figured out the algorithm where they were going to win. Mm -hmm. And most people are going to lose and you're going to have the smart engineer programmers and they're going to have an algorithm and they're going to win, you know? Yeah, I see your point. It, it makes a lot of sense. Well, we're kind of like you who won't win. Yeah, I won't I win. I know. Bitcoin futures. <laughs> if you're not going to win, I won't then lose I, either because I'm not going to trade them. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't win, then I am lost before I even start. So a further lesson. But if they're going to have futures. Plus it moves. Yeah. Carrie, it moves. 24 7 you know just yeah. like the futures you know so i mean and the way bitcoin's moving right now how are you gonna go to sleep at night with a position even if you I have mean, one bitcoin you could wake up tomorrow in the morning you know Bankrupt. richer than ever or broke and, oh, yeah, yeah like, i'd like, rather get a good night's sleep than one, get involved one bitcoin you know you buy a contract on one bitcoin or you sell it and you can wake up tomorrow and, uh, you know, they're carting away everything. You know, you're like... Uh, but can I just do, can I just do a, a shameless plug for myself oh, right now? Yeah, well, that's why you're here. I'll do a shameless plug? Absolutely. Okay. So we, we put on a trade in one of our services the other day. It's over now. It was in, uh, it was in CMG, Chipotle, right? Oh, sure. And Chipotle, had we thought, leveled off. And we bought call options for $4.50. Mm -hmm. Now, the nice thing about that is the market's only opened. You know, from traditional hours, 9.30 to 4. Right. Our risk was assigned by the amount of the call option, which is $4.50. Uh, your, your, your basis. And the next day they announced their search for the new CEO. Obviously, that was a gift. We didn't know that was going to happen. But you were able to sell those $4.50 call options for $30, oh, which is God. a four to 500% return. That's more than Bitcoin has moved in, oh, you know, the past six months. all the excitement and hysteria that we've seen right now in the mm. last year. That one option returned the bigger percentage. Yeah, and those, and, and those opportunities are out and, there, right? Yeah, and, and there's less risk. It's easier to get involved in, and that's that's my game. That's where I know what I'm doing. So yeah, if someone was to say, 
yeah, you know, how do I make money in Bitcoin? I'm not the guy. Don't don't come to me about how to trade futures bitcoins. The market hasn't even opened yet. <laughs> but if you want a chance for a more realistic return, you know, you hit up AdamS.com. We'll show you how to trade options, and uh, and that's where that's my that's my wheelhouse. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't I usually plug myself. I don't need to, but uh, you know, I, I I feel like I've been sounding weak in terms of the Bitcoin, where I say I'm afraid, <laughs> I don't want to touch it. You know, but there are things I know how to do well that I feel much more comfortable. So my advice to anyone, you know, when we're talking about trading and the best ways to make money is you know, play to your strength. If you know yes. Bitcoin, if you know the angle, if, you've, if you're a savant and you know how the blockchain can be used as technology, the same way gold could be used if it didn't have the value of gold and you just want to turn it into jewelry, if you have that edge and you understand where it's going and you could see that light, go make money in it. Play to your strength. Yeah. But if you don't understand it, if blockchain doesn't make sense to you and you don't know how to value that Bitcoin, well, do something that does make sense to you that you could be better at. So my advice always to everyone is play to your strength, go with what you know, really emphasize whatever you're good at rather than trying to play in an area where you're weak. Yeah, that's so that makes so much sense. Adam, I mean, it's a, a truism of Wall Street, you know, uh, go where you have an advantage, stay away from where, you know, it's the old adage when you're at the uh, poker table. And if you don't know who the chump is, who the uh, who the setup yeah. is, it's you. It's you. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the truth? And it isn't investing yeah. just the same way. If uh, if you can't figure that out, then it's you. And great rounders, yeah, rounders, rounders right there. That was right. Yeah, rounders. But they've always said it. It's a it's an yeah. age old truism at the poker table, which, you know, unfortunately, I didn't have the uh, requisite skill uh, to really be good at it. So I just said, hey, not for me. But hey, there's lots of things that you're an expert in that you don't even know you're an expert in that are monetizable. So anyways, well, Adam, so it's adammesh.com. A D A M yeah. M E S H dot com. And hey, while you're there, as long as you're listening, send us an email, uh, KL at KerryLutz.com. Get involved in the show. The Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz. The Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. Adam, it's always great having you on. And we'll talk to you again real soon when Bitcoin hits 50,000 next week. Kerry, <laughs> it's a pleasure. And I think, uh, I hope a lot of people listen to this. I know they will. And, uh, you know, it's always good to have your guard up. You never know when, when you're going to hit. So uh, okay. hopefully we prepare people a little bit. And uh, I feel good about that. Yeah. Thank hey, you. Hey, and next time, let's talk about the market uh, because the market's been going up forever too too, although not like a Bitcoin uh, proportions. You want a, want a quick stat I just read? Yeah, please. 2010. In mm -hmm. 2010, uh, the value of the dollar um, in that invested in S&P with reinvesting dividends mm -hmm. would be worth $4 now. And a dollar invested in Bitcoin in 2010 would be oh. worth $1.5 million right now. <laughs> so. All right. Well, that makes me feel great. So, hey, we'll catch up with you in a while. Thanks for coming on, as always. Thanks, Gary. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.